So this video is part of a series on formatting .xlsx files uh, in Python. And in this video, we're going to be uh, introducing you to some basic uses of the format class uh, in the XLSX writer module. So we're just going to be looking at how we can uh, format a particular cell, row, how we can merge cells, um, and some other basic formatting options. Um, we'll be doing this by uh, uh, sharing an input, um, which is a .csv file from a uh, uh, London government website, and uh, then we'll try to reproduce the uh, a, something similar to the Excel file with the same data, um, with lots of formatting in it um, as a good example. So all the code that we're about to use is uh, in the description below. So let's jump into uh, Google Colab uh, Jupyter Notebook. Let me uh, show you the input and uh, output we're looking at here. This is from the uh, London government website um, and the data is actually from the Office of National Statistics which is like the um, uh, UK government's main statistical agency for all kinds of data. Um, so yeah this the, this CSV I'm going to download and that's going to be my input data set and then uh, I'm going to try and you know from the raw data I'm going to try and uh, produce uh, this guy while it loads which is a fairly heavily formatted uh, um, .xlsx file. Um, so I'm going to try and reproduce this. Okay, so now this is loaded. Um, I'm not going to reproduce this metadata page because this is fairly um, tr trivial for my example, really. Um, so I'm going to try and reproduce this data page with uh, basically the same formatting, uh, formatting these numbers uh, the way they're not formatted on in raw data. Um, see that how these cells are merged, the cells merged. Um, probably won't do the index because I don't think it's on the input data file. So we'll just concentrate on reproducing these um, th these uh, columns. Um, in subsequent video, I'm going to I'm going to actually uh, demonstrate how to reproduce this chart and uh, all the formatting that's involved here, too. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to jump into illustrating how we, uh, from the raw data, we can uh, format all these cells um, the way they are in this uh, Excel file. So now let's jump back into Google Colab and we'll look at the code involved in reproducing this. Again, data from the City of London uh, government website. Um, we're going to look at some custom formats and sheets. Um, and uh, in subsequent videos, we'll look at um, formatting and charts and uh, how to use conditional outputs. There's also a subsequent video where I'll be producing the same thing, but with slightly more efficient code and using a user-defined function. So here we can just, um, to, to upload the file, I also, I'm going to uh, just, you know, import the files into Google Colab. Um, I, I downloaded the CSV file from the uh, London government website. And so then I get this little button. Um, I click that and... Uh, then I can select my file. And then you see I just uh, printed out the data frame so we can look at it a little bit. Um, so these are the three columns in the data frame from the CSV file. And as you can see, you've got the two areas of the UK as a whole and uh, the city of London. Um, so in the next step we're going to now uh, with the input data we're going to try and create the data tab on the .xlsx file and we'll use the uh, xlsx writer format class uh, and uh, we'll also use the um, merge range method um, 
and some other common methods uh, that are probably uh, more straightforward, like the uh, the write method where you just write to a cell. Um, see, this is an example, um, and the write column method where you um, here I'm putting the uh, the a second data set I've made called a second data frame I've made called uh, uh, df underscore uk. I'm, I'm I'm putting the columns from that and df underscore uk by the way is a subset um, of uh, the the data frame I imported uh, where the area is equal to the uk. So. This is the area column, so where it's equal to the UK. Um, so yeah, I'm going to run this, and then we'll look at the output and the code uh, alongside one another. Um, there's a fair bit in there, and I probably get rid of this because it. Oh, so yeah, we are going to freeze panes. That's why I had that in there. Um, but it's going to need to come before we close the workbook. So, okay, I'll run this and we'll look at the output and uh, um, see how it squares up with the uh, one on the uh, the C of London website. So again, if, if this is your first time using Colab, uh, I'm just putting everything in my uh, current directory. And so uh, you can download that right here. And now I'm going to go to uh, Excel Libra and look at the... Uh, the file. So here's my first attempt at using the method class um, in XLSX Raya uh, for this output. And you can see that I formatted the numbers correctly to the uh, thousand. Um, and uh, I've got the data in there um, correctly through March 2020. Which was all that was available when I made this video, um, and I've done uh, underlining format. Um, we've also frozen the top three uh, rows, which is uh, um, the way they have it on their website. So let's run through how we did that. Firstly, with the uh, format class, I added a format here. Um, I called it format underline, although this is a bit of a misnomer because it's not really an underline. I'm just putting a border on the bottom of a box, uh, so forgive me for that. Um, and uh, yeah, so the only thing I formatted there was to um, underline, and then for uh, format bold, uh, the only thing inside uh, the uh, add format method was uh, bold as true. I could then, you know, if I wanted to, I could add on other uh, key value pairs. Um, but for the purposes of this, you know, reproducing this file, I didn't need to. Uh, again, I made an, a third um, object here called format num. Um, and this is where I did this. And I think the key thing to notice here with the num format is that there's a zero on the end. Um, because sometimes I, if, if we put free hashes, um, you can get some issues if there's a zero on the end of a number. So I'd recommend always using a zero on the end of a number. And uh, you can see I've formatted it so that you have a comma for the thousand, which is what showed up in the output. Um, and then uh, at the end, I did the... Uh, um, freeze panes um, method um, and so uh, the first argument here is free and it's not um, zero indexed so this is it finishes it um, row free um, and in the second argument I haven't cut it off anywhere so zero is that argument. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's about it. 
So let's look at how we square up um, with the uh, uh, London government website. And, uh, well, the, the, you know, the numbers uh, look correct. Um, so that's good. Um, one thing I noticed right away is um, they do freeze the, also the first column. Um, so I'm going to need to do that. And uh, this is in center. Um, and also uh, this row needs to be bigger. And these need to also be uh, vertically aligned to center. So I'm going to make those changes. I'm going to jump back into uh, Google Colab, and this is good. Um, so you can see me illustrate uh, in real time how I might go about fixing um, something like this. Because again, we're just just for the sake of demonstrating um, a lot of things you can do in the formatting class. I'm trying to reproduce this. Um, as the same way as it's provided on the public website. So, okay, let's jump back into Colab, make these changes, and then uh, see if uh, see if we match up nicely. To do was to um, align the uh, um, align the numbers uh, merge range um, so it's centered. So, so we can do this using. Uh, Another key value pair, which uh, is a, a line and center. Um, then for the bold uh, format, I'm actually going to use uh, vertical align because um, that was uh, also aligned um, and I believe center will do that too. Um, and then the two other things I was going to do was, okay, the second argument to freeze panes here should be one because our, our first column is frozen. And then um, I like to do this at the end. I'm going to, if there's a particular row I want to change the height on, um, I'm going to use uh, WS. Uh, I'm going to use a set row method. Um, there's also a set default row method if you want to set um, every row to a particular height. And I'm, I'm not going to make it exactly. Um, I, I mean, I could I could go look in the uh, City of London one, um, but I'll, I'll just kind of guess that it's bigger than 20. So I'm going to, and uh, sorry, the first argument to set row, of course you can get it here, um, is uh, the row number, which is zero indexed, and it tells you. So uh, that, that was, yeah. Sorry, that was yeah. That's one. So it's the second row. And um, um, let's um, let's say it's uh, twenty-eight. So it's bigger than the standard. Um, okay, and so that's uh, that was everything. So what did we do here? We had another argument to v align uh, the bolded uh, headers. Uh, the very top header, which was the numbers um, merge range, um, we aligned center. We aligned the text in the center um, that's horizontally. Um, and then uh, we froze the first column uh, along with the first three rows. And uh, then we added, uh, um, we, we changed the height of the uh, second row. Uh, using the uh, set row effort. So okay, let's go uh, run this and now we'll look at our new output. Much better. Uh, pretty much matching um, as far as I can see. Again, we uh, froze the first column so you can move uh, sideways. Um, we centered text. We vertically aligned uh, these. We made this row um, bigger, um, and so yeah, we've done a pretty good job. It's not 100% perfect of reproducing this uh, um, this column, uh, this uh, um, this um, tab in the XLSX file. Um, so in the next uh, in a subsequent video, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm going to try and use uh, more succinct 
succinct, not necessarily more efficient code. And uh, I'm also going to introduce a user-defined function that I found really uh, useful um, for uh, the, the format class. Um, so yeah, uh, again, all the code used in this video is linked in the description below. Uh, thanks very much for watching.